the neural maps here one Kichi can learn and recognize patterns of different length in waveforms. This signal can come from audio uh, and voice data, EEG, EKG signal, MEMS, and you're going to see in the demo that you can easily extrapolate the way uh, patterns are learned and recognized in waveform to application dealing with text, DNA sequences, and more. In this brief demonstration, we're going to work with an EEG signal, and we're going to teach two types of waveform, a waveform type A and waveform type B, and we're going to use um, a neural, set the neural network in a conservative mode. Also, we have this window, which is going to be the number of samples that we want to teach at one time in a single pattern. So that's basically the length of the pattern we're going to submit to the neural network. So I'm going to start by teaching an example, for example, of this um, dip here as a waveform type A. And instantaneously, we can see all the waveform that the single neuron that was committed at this time uh, recognized as signal type A. We can observe false positive in this recognition. And basically, this is due to the fact that the, the neuron behaves a little bit like a child, and I showed it waveform type A, and it has the tendency to assimilate too many things to a waveform type A. So it's easy to correct by teaching, put, uh, pushing the window a little bit to the left and teaching it as an unknown. So basically, this is going to force the single neuron presently to shrink its uh, inference field, and we can see that less patterns are recognized uh, as a waveform type. I'm going to be a little more uh, conservative and teach more unknown here. There we go. Now, I'm not an expert at uh, EEG e e uh, interpretation, so I'll just pick up another type of waveform and assign it a waveform type B. Again, same symptom. The second neuron uh, is a little too generous, so I'm going to pick up a counterexample here to the left, but I can, if necessary, pick one up to the right, and so on. And uh, let's see, I'm going to scroll down to see if the recognition is satisfactory or not, or if I need to add some more uh, teaching. So we can see the waveform type A, recognized here, which is correct, waveform type B here, and if I go in the middle, there is an unknown, and on the screen, well, I can decide, again, I'm not an expert, to not consider this one, this D, but waveform type A, because it doesn't have the proper um, depth in amplitude. There we go. And if I move a little further along, we can see uh, satisfactory uh, recognition. So, to extrapolate this, a uh, simple demo could be used to count, you know, uh, the sequence of A and B, and the distance from one to the next, and, and so on. We can also view the content of the neurons. So in this panel, we can see the two committed neurons. Um, neuron number one here shows a waveform of type uh, B, which is assigned to a category 2 inside the CM1K chip. And then I assume the first neuron uh, with index 0 is assigned to a waveform type A, which is a category 1 in the CM1K chip. The CM1K can learn up to 16,000 different categories, and in this example we just use two of them. Also, um, you can always add, teach uh, new example at a later time, and the neurons will model the decision space uh, consequently. For example, um, I could decide that um, this waveform B, uh, which is here, composed of a, a, a dip, uh, can also be Recognize. I would like this portion of the signal to be also recognized as a waveform B. So I just have to teach it. It's going to commit a third neuron. So now we have the one neuron to model the waveform type A and two neurons to model the waveform type B. Recognizing three models uh, in a waveform is not very uh, impressive. But keep in mind that 
In the CM1 case, whether you have three models or 1,024 models, the amount of time will be the same for the recognition. Furthermore, if you cascade multiple chips, then you can have uh, uh, several thousands of models, and still the recognition will occur in two microseconds if we use a window of 24 samples, as shown in the demo, or it will take 10 microseconds to recognize a, a larger window of 256 samples. The chip consumes uh, less than uh, half a watt. Um, so we believe that the CM1K combined with the uh, sensors can be uh, very promising for real-time um, pattern recognition and also an anomaly detection.